there's a bunch of random stuff, whether it be things that happen after a certain video comes out, or just random ideas that aren't enough for a full video. And today, I want to talk about 20 small things I really like about Splatoon 3. Things that I've just kind of noticed over time, and aren't big enough for their own dedicated video. So, I'm gonna go through them, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy, and let's get started. Near the end of Splatoon 2, I did a video on Splatoon 2's problem with jump RNG and just shot spread in general. It was a bit of a more random video tackling a pretty minor topic that I never expected to actually get fixed in Splatoon 3, but Intensify Action does that. The conclusion that most people came to from my polls in that video is that jump RNG should be a mechanic that's mitigated and lessened, and Intensify Action gives pretty much every weapon with that an ability to actually do that while coming at the important downside of gear investment. I think it's an excellent new addition. Number two is Dreadringer. This is one of my favorite weapons they've ever added to the series, even when talking about other stuff that I've played. Explosher was really fun as a heavy bucket, but I like Dread a little bit more. It keeps that satisfying hit feeling when you get both sloshes to connect in the same slosh, while keeping similar range and speed to Range Blaster, one of my other favorite weapons. But my favorite part is how you can switch to painting and being very supportive. It feels like a weapon that implements the playstyles I've learned from both Splatoon 1 and 2 together in something that's incredibly flexible and fun. Number three is Tacticooler. I know this special is subject to a lot of debate these days, and maybe that's something I'll have to tackle more in its own video, but just strictly personally, I love what it's done for the game. I think for the most part, the added aggression that you're able to play to, and how important moving and taking space has become over time, has been really healthy for the game. And seeing a special that incentivizes people to fight so much, I think is a good thing. Number four is a really small thing about Kraken. I really like how the charge attack works specifically. It is so satisfying to to read someone's movement and get a direct sound when you're able to get a kill on them. It's just one of those small things that really makes the special feel a lot more fun. Number five, one of two challenges I'm gonna mention in this video, full speed ahead. I feel like rolling in terms of rollers is always this underutilized mechanic that they can't really do anything with because it would break the game for people who are like level one playing turf war. But this challenge was a cool way to just see a what if world where rolling was actually good. And it was one of the most hilarious things I have ever played. Honestly had a great time with it. Number six, range blaster is good. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty simple one. It's my favorite weapon and in Splatoon 2, it never really felt that great. In this game, it feels amazing. I really like how well it's balanced right now. It's in basically the perfect spot, so it's nice to be able to enjoy it more. Number seven is just the entirety of Zipcaster. Another thing where I know I've talked about it a bit, but it's been really fun, especially since I've stopped using Sword as much recently. It's been one of the specials I've missed using the most. I've gone back and played that weapon a lot for fun just to use Zipcaster. I think if a special is so fun, it literally gets you to play other weapons more often just to use it. That's a really good sign of how good of a job they've done with it. Number eight is a small little detail to Booyah Bomb. When you have the Booyah Bomb fully charged, it didn't really do too much different in Splatoon 2, but in Splatoon 3, you basically ascend to Super Saiyan 2 and get the same kind of lightning effect. That's really cool, and I wonder if in Splatoon 4 they'll update Booyah Bomb to give you really long hair or something. It'd be funny if they just kept this trend going. Number nine is the Grizzco Splatana. I think this is my favorite Salmon Run weapon. It has some flaws since its mobility is pretty limited and its paint is absolutely horrible, but the ability to dash slash super far and just basically one-shot everything together is an insanely fun combination. It's tuned in a way that the weapon feels broken without feeling like you're cheating. You still have to work for stuff, and I really like that dynamic. Number 10, the order weapon aesthetics. We've had weapon kits in Splatoon before, and some of my favorites have been those that reference things. For example, the Splatoon 2 hero spotlighting being the same way the Splatoon 1 heavy spotlighting was held. But I think order weapons all having this super simple aesthetic with slightly different sounds is probably the best ones we've had so far. They feel a lot more distinct while still feeling like their own package of weapons. You can see the similarities between all of them while they still seem different enough from base weapons. Number 11, the opening gambit buff. Playing a weapon like Range Blaster or 52 that benefit heavily from the heavy RNG and speed buffs and just running around desperately trying to keep Gambit by constantly getting kills and assists is just such a fun way to play the game. It's an entirely different experience and it's one of the most creative buffs I ever think they did. Number 12, the setting of Undertow Spillway. Obviously, Undertow as a map isn't something I think most people are too fond of, but I think this is my favorite location for a stage. I mean, just look around it. The area is massive. It's really cool to use an actual spillway, something used to protect in floods, as an area to play the game. It fits the Splatoon idea of people just playing wherever the hell they want because they don't care, while also being in a really cool setting visually. It just sets the map apart a lot. 
At number 13 is Titles and Banners. I don't have too much to say, I just think this is a really cool addition. I didn't really care about it as much when the Direct came out, but after getting a few badges and titles and stuff like that that I want, it's really cool to just have a little bit of identity to it. And it's also been a cool watermark for the channel to put who's editing each section of the video in a way that fits Splatoon pretty well, so that's cool. And number 14 is a small little thing on the game. I did a video about pencil being really broken on the second channel, and I thought it'd be funny to just use an actual pencil for it. And it kind of blew up in this video and on Tumblr, which I found really funny. And Splatoon has a lot of this. There's like a bathtub, there was a pen that's really broken, just a bunch of different stuff. And I kind of like how out of context this game can just sound absolutely hilarious when talking about it in a competitive setting. Number 15 is Robo Ramen. Out of all the stages Splatoon 3 has added, this is by far my favorite. And for a while, I thought it's something that would have aged poorly with time, something that would get a little bit more old after the initial hype, which is stuff that's happened with things like Crab Legs, Ship Shape, or Marlin, for example. But honestly, the more I play Ramen, the more I enjoy it. I just think they did a fantastic job with it, and I love that trench area. It's one of the best things in any Splatoon map. Number 16, multiplayer battle music. So, you know, my opinions on Splatoon music are something I don't talk about very much. But I think Splatoon 1 does a good job of having battle music that actually sounds like it's for battles. It's kind of one of my criticism of Splatoon 2, is that while it did expand in having a lot more variety between the type of music that would play, some of the songs that were picked just didn't really fit in the multiplayer to me. I would play a match with them and just think, eh, this doesn't really feel like it fits here. Splatoon 3, I think, for the most part, has found a perfect middle ground though. There's definitely a difference in styles, but all of the multiplayer soundtrack feels like it fits a lot better for multiplayer battles specifically. There's very few songs that really feel out of place to me when comparing it to Splatoon 2, and I think it keeps the quality even better than both of those games. They did a great job with it. Number 17, the Alterna music. So speaking of music takes, I think Alterna has some of my favorite. There's some of the silly stuff, like the classic Bing Bang song, but personally the music I like is some of the more different sounding ones. Of course, you know, my outro literally has one of them, but I think the hub themes in particular are some of my absolute favorites. They're very different compared to conventional Splatoon songs, mainly because there's not as much of the Splatoon lyrics in it, which I have to admit is part of why I like them. But at the same time, I don't know, it still feels like a song from Splatoon, and it's a very chill vibe a lot of the time. I just like them. They're one of the few things I would actually consider listening to outside of the game. Number 18, High Jump Mode. So there had to be another challenge in this, and to no one's surprise, it's High Jump Mode. Do I even need to say anything about this? The amount of insane shortcuts are so funny, let alone seeing everyone just jumping around. It's a very different feel, and having you slow down a lot but get a super power jump compared to having really fast movement if you stayed on the ground makes the game feel a lot different. So I think even outside of all the cool shortcuts you could do on the maps, it still feels really unique on its own. Number 19 is Stealth Jump. This might be one of the most healthy abilities I've ever seen. Despite being one of the best abilities in the entire game for like seven years now, how many times have you heard someone actually complain about it? Like if that isn't the sign of something that's designed well, I don't know what is. Stealth Jump at this point feels so amazing that I feel like it should just be a base mechanic of super jumping in general. Maybe we'll see something like that for Splatoon 4, since I think base super jump could be a little bit better that way. Finally, on number 20 is the most random idea I ever had in a video. In my very first Splatoon 3 discussion, I talked about what if you could go to the Splatoon 1 and 2 plazas. It's probably the most random hope I have in that entire video, and somehow it's one that actually happened. Now, my original idea with it is that you could use it to buy different gear. Mainly, the Splatoon 1 hub would have the Splatoon 1 gear and the Splatoon 2 one having the Splatoon 2 gear, so you could buy more stuff at once. Which would have been cool to implement, but honestly, updating the different hubs, especially Splatoon 1s, to fit with the passage of time was possibly even better. I really enjoy seeing the Splatoon 1 hub. It gives that feeling of nostalgia that I'm a little bit subject to, but it's still also clearly changed with time, as the player base has, which I think is just really cool. Splatoon in general aging the same way actual time does in real life is a really neat detail to me for the series that I think has so much potential over time, and they'll only continue to do more cool things with it. But yeah, there's 20 random things I like about Splatoon 3. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.